Jazzy. Um, I am the Director of Growth at Bill Highway. Um, we throw all these webinars every other week as well as roundtables in different cities, uh, purely educational. If you're new today, ask somebody that's been here. You will not be sold anything, okay? This is just about you all and stuff that we uncover um, from working with over 6,000 chapters and associations um, that we like to share, okay? Today is um, a little bit different. We keep trying different ways of providing education for you all. And today we were at the, um, not today, but we were recently at the uh, um, ASAE's uh, Membership Marketing and Communication uh, Conference several months back. And we held a happy hour for people like you because you keep telling us you want to meet each other. And in this happy hour, we're, um, uh, we're all having a good time and just talking about uh, you know, different things that are working or not working, what we're seeing in our associations. We ran across a really incredible uh, association, AIGA. And they explained to us something they're doing. And our, our marketing uh, lead here, uh, Charlotte, immediately said, we have to make a webinar out of this. This is awesome. Um, so that is why we're here today. So this is a mini case study that explains how AIGA utilized chapters you're going to hear me say that a lot today, to add value to membership. Oh my gosh, uh, if all of us CRPs could figure that out, um, we could change the, the conversation at HQ about how our chapters worth it. And the result is over 600 chapter leaders are using this new communication tool. All right? So we're going to go and dive pretty deep into that. So now that you know me, it's great to meet all of you. Um, what I want to really quickly sum up is why do something like this okay and so the slide here is like Kyle it's Friday like it's a short week it's a holiday week why are we talking about dying um, but this is where associations are at right now you have the choice to grow and adapt or die okay um, grow and adapt or die so what does that mean who are you actually competing with as an association all right who are you competing with you're competing with Amazon so if I go to your website at HQ or I go to a chapter's website Wherever, as a member, they are experiencing something online, you're competing with Amazon. Why? Because that's the experience people are coming to know and expect on the web. It doesn't matter if you're an association or an e-commerce store. There are one-click buys, and how easy Amazon makes things is how easy or the, the, it should at least be the goal for your association. So that's who you're competing with. Google. I'm going to show you just in a second why Google. but you know, 50 years ago, I want you to think, what were associations value prop 50, 60, 70 years ago, right? Um, it was information. It was information because that's where you got it. The association was that uh, commanding voice. Today, where do your members go? Almost everywhere but the association often, right? They Google it. That's the most common thing they're going to do when, when they need to figure something out. Information's everywhere. So you're competing with Google now. YouTube. So YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world, only to Google, and Google owns YouTube. Uh, but this is where people go to learn now. You talk about video courses and things like that. It's incredible how much information is on there. And then when we talk about networking or connecting, every social media site out there is, is competition for you. Okay? So what do you do about that? All right? And today we're going to be talking a little bit about that. How do you guys combat that? More importantly, as you guys all know, our webinars are only for associations that have some kind of component system or structure, whether that's chapters or state affiliates, whether you're federated or chartered, whatever that looks like, this is all for you, all right? And so I want you to ask yourself a question. So this is the point where I always tell you, take out your, your notes right now. So pull up your Evernote or your OneNote um, or whatever you're using. If it's a piece of paper like me, I'm, I'm still old school. I like to write things down. Where can I meet dot, dot, dot? Now, I want you to, I, I actually do, I want you to write this down. Where can I meet? Where can I network with other people like me? All right, and now fill in the blank with your association membership. Are you a general contracting uh, association? Are you a advertising association? Are you AIGA, the Association for Graphic Artists, right? And um, uh, what I, I, I want you to do then is Google it. All right, so we're going to do this together right now. So um, where can I meet dot, dot, dot? So I'm going to pop over to my web browser. I was just listening to some Mr. Lucas Graham. So I go to Google. I'm going to pipe in, where can I meet other designers? 
where can I meet other graphic artists? And do you see or not see what shows up? Not a single link on the first page shows up for the association. Now, can anybody type into the question and, and do this real quick? Type into the question box, how many, what's the percentage? Do you know the percentage of traffic that makes it off the first page of Google? I'm going to wait for a second. What, what, do you, what percentage of people do you think make it to the second page of Google? Jennifer said 4%. Who else? Anyone else has guesses? How many people make it off that first page? All right, 2%, 5%. It's a little less than 2% of people on average. 2%. Susanna said zero. It's close to zero. So if you're not showing up here, that's a real problem, right? So when we say, where can I meet, they are Googling it, all right? So now I um, went as far as if you look at that first page for graphic designers or graphic artists who are a type one type of member of AIGA, just to be clear, this is what I found. Holy moly. This is on meetup.com. And there are 846,000 members and 15, close to 1,600 meetups across the globe just for one type of membership for AIGA. If you look at AIGA, they have 25,000 members, a very healthy association. Um, but the, the, the challenge here is you're competing with all this new technology. So how do associations become the epicenter of innovation for this kind of stuff? And it doesn't mean you've got to build your own meetup.com. It just means how are you leveraging it? And then not only that, how do you make your chapters or components a um, not a hindrance or a problem inside the association, but how do you make them an asset? All right? That's what I'm asking you today, and that is something AIGA has done with Slack, and I think it is incredible. I haven't seen something like this out there yet. All right, how are we feeling, okay? So I, I know that's like uh, the sky kind of seems to be falling for a second, but the good news is we have some answers for you. So the agenda today, uh, we're going to go over first and foremost, what is Slack? By the way, can you guys all type in, how many of you know what Slack is? Just give me a Y for yes and for no. How many of you know what Slack is? All right, so go to that question box as I go through the agenda. I'm, I'm really curious. Brian says yes, Samantha, yes, our chapters use it. Jennifer, yes, Aaron, yes, Jennifer, other Jennifer, no, okay. So we're gonna go over what is Slack real quick. We're gonna talk about the Slack adoption at the chapters for AIGA. It's obviously the greatest tool in the world pushed by HQ doesn't mean anything if that chapters aren't utilizing it, right? Adoption concerns, very important, benefits and results in onboarding challenges, okay? So that, that's our agenda today. But first, you gotta start with what's the biggest challenge? One of the, the most beautiful parts of this case study is that the, the reason this came about, this project for AIGA, was because it was being discussed at the chapter leader conference. I don't know what that's called for AIGA when we talked to them and we interviewed them for this, for, for this mini case study uh, webinar. But they listened. Oh my gosh, how crazy is that? They listened and they heard that um, this was important to members. Th their members were on Slack. Now, you might be saying, Kyle, our members aren't on Slack. I get that, but I asked you to fill in the blank earlier, right? We're gonna fill in the blank with what kind of tool it is in just a second. This one's just Slack because that's where their members were. So oftentimes, this is where I see associations at HQ, not so much the CRPs because you guys get it, but a lot of people that don't see the value in chapter saying, what you want to say? What does the association want to say? What does our HQ association want to get done? And here's what they're interested in. And in the middle is the relevance. And I always, if you've heard me say this before, or been on one of my webinars, this is where you live as a CRP. You live in the middle because you're kind of fighting both sides from the chapters and from HQ, right? So the relevance is in the middle. So that's the challenge. All right, as everyone's taking notes right now, write this down for me. I mean, you're, we're gonna make this a part of our webinars going forward. Hashtag leverage chapters, okay? Hashtag leverage chapters. Oh, and Deborah just came in. It was the AIGA leadership retreat. Thank you, Deborah. And by the way, Deborah and her, your team, thank you so much for letting us do this. Like I am, you can ask my marketing team. I've not been as pumped for a webinar as I have been today because of the content, so thank you. Um, so hashtag leverage chapters, AIGA, stop that. 
they understood that. Okay, I want you to write that down because we're going to come back to a question at the end, uh, specifically for your association. Okay. So let me catch. All right. So really quick, what is Slack? So for the people that didn't know, um, Slack is a newer tool in the last, you know, probably five to seven years. Uh, maybe a little, a little bit more than that. Um, yeah. But it is a it's a team collaboration and communication tool. We use it here internally at Bill Highway. So you can invite people to be part of a Slack team. Um, channels can have specific topics or themes. So uh, brainstorming or culture or um, design chat or marketing. We'll go over that a little bit more in just a second. You can send direct messages to um, individuals or you can create different groups um, or, or subgroups uh, through Slack. And it's, it's easy, fast, and convenient. It's just, in my opinion, the best tool out there for this, for this kind of communication. It's incredible. Okay? So why fill in the blank tool? All right? Well, and real quick, if you've got questions about Slack, my, my team's in the chat. So just shoot them over to us and, and we can explain further. So why Slack? Why meetup.com? Why? I want you to write this down right now. I, I, we're going to take a couple seconds, people. So if you know me, this is not about just information. This is about application. You're going to get at least one thing out of this webinar right now. So write down on a piece of paper why this tool, right? Why would, we, why would we use Slack? Why would we use a new event software? Why would we use a new LMS? Why would I put our events onto meetup.com, right? Not every association's got the same problems, therefore it's not going to be the same solution. But the reason why, okay, and I'm going to show you in just a second, is because of this. All right, Kyle, what is that? Well, I am going to show you. So there was a blog post <clears throat> that I, when I Googled best Slack channels for designers, and all of these Slack channels came up. Dear designers, hashtag startup. Midwest Dev Chat, Workform, all of these Slack channels came up and AIGA had the, the wherewithal, not that they, they saw this blog post, but this is the reason their members are in these areas or potential members. They're all over the place. So it's showing that members are asking for value. Have you ever heard the, the quote from Henry Ford? If I would have listened to my customers, i.e. members, I would have built a faster horse. Really what they were saying when saying, I, I wish horses went faster, they were really saying, I wish I could get around quicker. Well, here's evidence that AIGA's members are saying, we want to connect better online, right? Now, what AIGA didn't do was force them into a way that they wanted the members to do it. I write this down. Here's a ground rule that is so important, guys. They met the members where they were at. Now, I didn't come up with that. I stole that from Reggie Henry, the CIO at ASAE. What AIGA did that I love about this mini case study, they met the members where they were at, okay? That is the important thing. So I ended up, before this webinar, I took the time to sign up for one of these, and I jumped in, okay? So you can see K.R. Bazzi, the designer. <laughs> um, uh, sometimes I think I'm funnier than, than uh, I am, guys, sorry. So the, uh, the channels here were super simple, and this is actually Slack. So this is after I signed up, okay, and it's free. And what I found was they had different channels in here. There's a general chat. There's a chat for events. There's a chat for designer-related announcements or blog posts, right? So here's a Dribbble article about find people on map and start chatting, right? So, you know, um, this person posted on Dribbble and they wanted to share it. If I wanted to, I could say, hey, you know, Shabir, and I could shoot them a direct message. Okay, so this was already happening. Your members are already doing this, right? So AIGA said, this is great. We need, to, we need to provide this value through the association. Holy moly, I am like, I was so impressed that AIGA did this. So what they did was they helped, they leveraged, go back to that hashtag, leverage their chapters, and they helped create a program where chapters could create their own Slack channels, okay? So when I Googled AIGA Slack channels, look at this. It's all of their chapters. So if you get asked the question at HQ, are chapters worth it? Uh, the question you should be asked, it's not the right question. You gotta ask better questions. Are we leveraging them, right? And so um, we'll talk about, uh, this is not just for members, this was also for chapter leader communication. But um, I, I took the, the liberty uh, to sign up for AIGA Upstate New York's one, okay? 
So yeah, I went here and I actually just said, send me my invite and I signed up, it's free, right? And so here you go. Now that same value that members were already looking for, the association is providing, but it wasn't a tool that AIGA said, you know, you gotta use ours. They met the member where they were at, okay? And that is incredible. So now I got the welcome, the intro, the general. By the way, I haven't paid membership, but now I'm engaging, I'm getting value from the association before I'm even signed up for the association. God willing, maybe my friend sent me this link, and I don't even know what AIGA is yet. But now they have me uh, uh, inside of their world, right? They're adding value to me without asking for anything. Incredible. That is the modern day way of buying things. Get value and then I'll buy what you're giving me. Um, so incredible. So um, I'm sure that there was a lot of debate and discussion about what this is right and why are we doing this and how's it gonna work. Um, uh, but the, the fact I think is so beautiful here is they added membership value by leveraging chapters. So cool, okay. So now um, you can kinda get to the point of where I was at before. Why Slack? Why? Because the members were there. They, they weren't asking for this by name, but because they're all in there, that, that shows that they want to communicate with each other. They want to share with each other. Why can't the association be the epicenter for that, right? And, and, and then give first and get second, right? Give first and get second. So why did AIGA adopt Slack? So first off, when we talk about the platform, it's accessible. It can connect with anything. It's such a cool tool. And I get it, right? You're saying, well, Kyle, some of our chapters aren't up to date on technology or HQ doesn't even know what's out there. Okay, great. You just identified the problem. Write it down and circle it and tell that story, right? I'm serious. Right now, if you guys don't think that your HQ associations or your chapter networks understand technology like your members do, that's the problem, right? So write that down and circle it. Great, define it, now let's go work on that. The second is, <laughs> and you got a little Bernie Sanders flavor in here, this is awesome. I know how to use Slack and I'm funny at it. Um, why Slack? Because members, because members, because that's where the members were at, because members were already asking about that through the value. So now apply this to you, information's great but apply this to your association. What, are your mem what do you think your members are asking for? What do you think your chapter leaders are asking for? Have you surveyed them, right? What is going to help them improve membership value, right? And then last is, I love this, make channels, not emails. Everybody hates how full their inbox is, right? If you're coming back for the 4th of July or you took an extra day off or you're watching this recording because you're not in office today, and you come back next week and you got 600 emails, what is great about Slack is it offers, it offers a different communication channel for your members. So member to member through the association, it offers communication for chapter leader to chapter leader to share best practices, and it also offers communication channels to HQ, right? So um, make channels, not emails. Offer guidelines and standards, right? So you can create different channels for even like, um, let's say, there's a Slack channel just for chapter leaders onboarding, right? The, the, the possibilities are, are endless on, on Slack, but make channels, not, not emails. Sounds great, Kyle, but how many are you saying that right now? Sounds great, Kyle, but I don't need Slack. Okay, then tell, type into the chat and tell me what your guys' biggest problems are. I can tell you right now, if you're an association, your biggest problem is Meetup, or one of your biggest problems is Meetup. And I'm going to be hard pressed not to, uh, to, to be swayed on that. If I'm wrong, type it into the chat. I'd love to see that. But sounds great, Kyle, but you don't get it. Um, my HQ, they're so slow to move. Or my chapter leaders are so disengaged. We're fully federated, Kyle. We can't make the chapters do anything. Um, well, Kyle, our, our members are very behind the times on technology. What would I even use? This sounds great, but how does it apply to me? Okay. I get that, but the onus is on you to figure that out, okay? So what, what are the biggest problems? Write those down. Write down what members are saying. If you don't know what members are saying, then I need you to, to start figuring out through surveys, okay? Um, and, and, and walking through that. Because it is possible 
but it's up to you to make it probable. All right. So all of the excuses, I, we have a rule in Bill Highway. There's no, we, we, have, we have meetings uh, um, where we brainstorm and there's a ground rule. You can only say yes and to someone's point. You can't say no but. There's a million reasons things can't work, right? I need you to find the reasons they can, all right? So sounds great but I want to get rid of that. So Samantha just aptly asked, how did AIGA suggest this to the chapters? That's a great question, Samantha. So we're transitioning now. I, I wanted to kind of illustrate why this is important, guys, why this matters, and, and, and that it's possible, and associations are doing it, and, and maybe yours isn't, but it doesn't mean you can't, okay? So the initial concerns of adopting Slack, um, how, and again, we, we interviewed AIGA to get this out of them, right? So how, how was National going to keep up with the responses? Oh my gosh, if you go back to when I Googled AIGA Slack channels, there is so much going on. How would they manage anything that got out of hand? There's no process or previous experience in managing something like this. You know, it's something new. How are we going to do it? And to AIGA's much deserved credit, um, when you're doing something new, it can be scary, right? Life starts outside your comfort zone, but it it was a right fit because members were already there, right? So if you get in the right ballpark, you'll find your seat. Okay, you might sit in the wrong one at first, but you'll find your seat if you're in the right ballpark. They were in the right ballpark. Um, and so let's fast forward two years. So 66%, 66% already just in two years of their 900 chapter leaders are on the Slack channel. That's incredible. Improving communication between chapters is absolutely incredible. Building a better relationship with Bond. HQ is now providing more value for the chapter leaders. 131 Slack channels have been created by the AIGA uh, um, chapter system. How cool is that? 131 Slack channels. You know what that improves? It improves SEO. It improves member engagement. It improves, they have 25,000 people uh, as members, but what about how many are engaging with the association now, right? Um, it, it, it's absolutely incredible. And 95% of these Slack channels have been, uh, um, are chapter generated for membership. How cool is that? You guys have any questions on that? I think that is something that is absolutely incredible um, with the way they did it. So now you've seen the results. So this isn't all just conjecture about a cool idea. We're talking about things that are actually happening, all right? And so how Slack helped chapter leaders, and Samantha, we're going to go over um, how they, they suggested it too, okay? So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the execution. So how Slack helped chapter leaders. Um, so number one, HQ listened at the chapter leader conference. Deborah, thank you for, for typing in which conference it was. But I've been to a bunch of these chapter conferences now for you guys and, and, and been speaking at them. The, I see a very stark contrast between the ones that are there to just say things and the ones that are there to also listen. AIGA obviously listened. And so the chapter leaders can now connect with one another. That was something that was brought up. Again, it doesn't mean they were necessarily saying, like, we need Slack to communicate. Um, maybe they were. But more often, they're going to be saying, we want to communicate and share best practices better. I hear that almost at almost every chapter conference among chapter presidents. Uh, number three, helps bridge communication between national and the chapters. Let's work on uh, uh, bridging the divide. Let's work on creating a healthier relationship between you and your chapters. That'll improve everything, folks. Number four, new high-level member outreach. No doubt, this is so cool. So not only is it a tool to help chapter leaders communicate, but it is a high-level member outreach. You're gonna have, I'm, I'm signed up in one of the, the slacks right now. You're gonna have people in there now that are engaging with the uh, association that might not even be members. Right? How incredible is this? It's just the members themselves are helping create a virtuous cycle of bringing new people into the association. That's absolutely phenomenal. And so a quick stat here. 70% of interaction on AI, or AIGA sorry, uh, Slack happens in direct messages. The association is facilitating member-to-member -member networking. And this is a platform that's just ongoing, guys. It's not an event where you have to set up and figure out and there's all this work that goes into it. 
that has its own place. Do not get me wrong. But now you've got members connecting with each other through the association on an ongoing basis, right? Absolutely incredible. So that's how it helped chapter leaders, right? Because obviously I'm making a leap here, but I'm assuming you already believe this, but tell me if you don't, engaged members are going to be higher retention. Um, you're going to have higher growth rate. You're going to have happier members. They're going to buy more things. They're going to come to more events, right? Um, uh, this is the future of the association. AIGA, a huge pat on the back. I, I hope we can tell the story and, and keep preaching from the rooftops. All right, so that was how it helped chapter leaders. And obviously, since it helped chapter leaders, that auto automatically has a benefit for, um, you know, the entire organization and HQ in general. But how did, you know, let's talk a little bit about how it helped the org coming from the words from AIGA. So first off, it elevates chapter content and ideas to national. So cool, or international. So it, it helps elevate that up to HQ, right? If you've been wondering what chapters want, I ask about half of CRPs understand uh, or what their chapter strategic objectives are. Half. That is, that is incredibly poor. If you do not know your chapter strategic objectives, you need to figure it out. All right, you need to start surveying them more. You need to have a constant flow, a two-way street of communication, both learning what they want and both helping them understand where HQ's at. Number two, build excitement for leader retreat. All right, this, this helps uh, the HQ build excitement for the leader conferences now, right? And how cool is that? It's a virtuous cycle. It came from a leader conference. They can share recordings on dedicated channels in Slack, no longer buried in emails. How many of you CRPs email something to your chapter leaders and then 30% of them do it, right? And how many of them, when you call them, they say, oh, I never got the email. And you're like, yeah, yes, you did, right? What, what the reality, what's actually happening here is email is becoming so cluttered and has been for so long that when you can create it in a different area, it helps them compartmentalize and helps that you actually get a, a stronger level or increased level of adoption of what you want done. So share recordings of dedicated channels. You can dedicate channels to maybe even just industry news for your chapter leaders now. You can create that, own, that channel inside Slack for your chapter leaders. So less emails also means they're more likely to read the emails you do send, okay? So this is just a few ways that they, they, it helped AIGA. Going even higher level strategically, I mean, this is so cool for, um, I mean, the possibilities could be endless, right? What could this do to volunteer succession, right? What can this do to onboarding chapter leaders? What could this do to, uh, if your the overall health of the communication between HQ and the chapters is improved, what, what can we do next? Can we improve events together? Can we collect data together better to figure out how to reach new members, right? It's, it's absolutely endless and, and, and so cool that they did this. All right, um, and John asked, why Slack over Facebook or LinkedIn that they already have? So John, it's a good question. I, Deborah, if you want to chat in here, um, I'd love to hear what you say. I'm going to go out on a limb, uh, John, and I'm going to say, you know, even our own graphic designer here in, in, um, in, at Bill Highway uh, and, and having uh, been at some startups that I, I led and, and hired a bunch of people in the graphic design world, the graphic artist world, they're all on Slack. They're all on Dribble and they're all on Slack. So John, yes, they're all on Facebook too, but they're all on Slack and Dribble for design purposes. Um, and I think that Slack offers a much more uh, flexible um, and user self-service platform for them to, the members to create what they want, right? So Facebook and LinkedIn, we've created a LinkedIn group for you guys, the CRPs, and it's super limited. Um, and doesn't let us do a lot of things. Slack, if we could get you guys all on Slack, it would be like game changing. You guys could connect on your own a lot better. Um, you guys could create your own channels. Um, there's so much more you can do in Slack because that's what it does. Whereas Facebook and LinkedIn have groups, but it's not their core functionality. Uh, Deborah, let me know if you have anything different there. And John, let me know if that answered uh, your question. Okay, onboarding promotion. So Samantha, hope you are still listening. Um, so the onboarding promotion, um, listserv blasts and email campaigns, right? Uh, you got to work this in as well uh, into your, your conferences, right? 
uh, formal board, re board welcome emails to new chapter leaders. So how do you build this into that kind of process that, that are already at your chapters? And then, like I said, annual leadership retreat details. So you gotta, you got to layer this in into your entire organization. And I know AIGA is very progressive. And, you know, quite honestly, I wish more associations adopted that kind of mindset. Um, and I think that's why they're, they're pushing the envelope on this stuff. But let's say that that's just not possible right now for you because you guys aren't there. That's okay. What I would say is start small. Start it with a couple of chapters and see what happens. And again, I know we're talking about Slack right now, but we could be talking about other stuff. But just try things out. Here's, here's, here's something to write down as a ground rule for being a component relations professional, a CRP. So write this down. If, if you're looking for answers, there's a good chance that a chapter's already figured it out. Right? There's a good chance that a chapter's already figured it out or already has the idea. So ask the question. If Create a cadence where monthly you pose a new, a new challenge or obstacle or opportunity that you're exploring and pose it to your chapter presidents. Hey, who's thought about this? Who's solved this? Who's trying to solve this? Right? And then see what's out there. That's a ground rule to be a CRP. The answer is probably already out there. Okay? Um, so Samantha said, 5% um, of chapter channels were not created by chapter, uh, chapters or chapter leaders. Did the HQ create these to start? Um, so Samantha, what, what um, you're seeing there is it's twofold. One is the HQ created um, channels for just exclusively for chapter leaders. Okay? And again, Deborah, pipe in if I'm, if I'm uh, off on this at all. But they created those channels specifically for chapter leaders for onboarding for a bunch of different things. The, the channels are endless that you could create for chapter leaders, right? And then each chapter opened up their own Slack channel and allowed members to join Slack and connect. And then the members could even go further than that and create their own channels through the chapter's uh, uh, Slack channel. Um, and so when I say self-service, that, that's what it is, right? So that is, um, that's the power of Slack. That's why you see you want 95% of them to be created by the, the chapter community. Uh, I think that shows the value of, of what they were trying to do. Samantha, does that make sense? I want to make sure I answered your question. Okay. Um, and no, great. Deborah, thank you. So for John's question real quick too, um, as an AI, this is from Deborah, as an AI GA DC member, slash former board member, and I work for an association, I would say Facebook is more, um, is more person uh, than professional, and LinkedIn is more professional. Slack is the best of both worlds, and it doesn't seem too overwhelming. I am on AIGA DC Slack group for diversity, which allows me to be a part of a conversation specific to my interests and needs as an in-house designer. So John, what Deborah just uh, um, uh, articulated way better than I did, is if you create a Facebook group as a chapter, everything goes in the Facebook group, right? LinkedIn, same thing. Slack, she's a part of the main, the main Slack channel, but what she's really following, and I'm going to guess has like email alerts on, uh, or different kinds of alerts, just for the diversity channel for, uh, through the DC AIGA Slack group. So I think that's where the, the, the flexibility comes in, which is really cool. And thank you, Deborah, for, for um, uh, participating here with us. Okay, so challenges, right? Because there's, I think there's lots of positives here, but there's always, I'd say, even more than a few challenges. And I'm going to say a new idea is more daunting than it is positive, okay? First and foremost, you've got to go back to the member. Because AIGA, in my opinion, nailed it with their member here, um, the challenges you can work through. If you don't nail it with your member, they're not going to be willing to go through a little bit of, like, early stage product beta um, or project beta uh, because they don't really see the value. But if they see the value, they'll work through the hiccups you have in your project, okay? So chapter leader turnover was a challenge. Difficult to determine active versus inactive chapter leaders. They had, you know, you're on Slack. You can't control that platform. It's not your AMS where you, have, you can customize it, which, by the way, that's also why your AMS struggles to keep up with new technology sometimes. Slack can be a distraction at first without
internally has answers to all these things you're going to have to work through. But if you get the, if you solve a big problem, people are going to be much more willing to work through those challenges. Okay. So uh, absolutely, I don't want you to think that this is all sunshine and, and rainbows. But the, what they nailed was they just got it right with the member. They met them where they were at. Okay, key takeaways real quick, and, I, and then I got an exercise for us. Um, so number one, listen. Listen to the ideas, the needs, the wants of your chapter leaders. I typically ask this question, and I'm going to do it again, uh, even though I see a lot of familiar faces. When is the last time, and I want everyone's attention here real quick, so get back from your email or whatever you're doing. When's the last time you surveyed your chapter leaders? Type that into the questions for me real quick. I won't, I won't call out associations or anything, so don't worry. I just want to see what the responses are. When's the last time that you've surveyed chapter leaders? Aaron, bravo. April, good for you. Samantha, November, it's yearly. Awesome, I'm glad to hear that. Jennifer, five plus years. Yep, that's typically a challenge, right, Jennifer? John, yearly. Uh, Barbara, one year ago, subset in March. Awesome. Okay. So first off, once a year is good, but um, I would also continually challenge you guys um, to find a good forum for continuous feedback, right? It doesn't have to be Slack by any means uh, if that's not what your industry is about, but find that continuous forum too. But this is great. I, I, I like the answers. Um, so key takeaways. So listen, it's good that you're already listening. If you're not and for the people that didn't put their answer into the question box because you're embarrassed, um, I'm not blaming you. I'm empowering you. Go get that done because that's, that's absolutely a key takeaway. Number two, research. If it's a good idea, find a way to make it work and move forward. All right? So do your research. Ask the question. Listen, if you're listening to this webinar right now and you say, well, I don't know who to go to, email, email me. We, we do this all the time and help consult on different projects that have nothing to do with Bill Highway. You're not going to be sold. We just, want to, we just want to surface stuff like this for you guys. So do your research. And, and I go to your members. Where are your members at, right? I just talked to an association where they said, well, most of our membership pays by check. And I said, okay. And HQ got it. But some of the chapters were saying, like, they've always paid by check. That's how they're always going to pay. But then there was a survey sent out. And 50% of the chapters were saying their members were begging for online payments. The other chapters that said that they don't need that probably didn't listen, right? So do your research to figure out and find the biggest problems. That's where you want to try to focus on, okay? The biggest problems are biggest opportunities, all right? Because that way if you, if you get it 50% right, it's still more impactful than, than getting something 100% right that really didn't add a lot of value. Connect, right? So connect chapter leaders in a way that works for them. I love the annual surveys. I think they're an absolute must as a CRP, but I challenge you to go further. I challenge you, like AIGA did here, to find a new forum for continuous feedback because you all have a common purpose and mission, right? And so use that alignment to find ways to communicate better on an ongoing basis. And don't make it just one-to-one, -one, meaning don't make it just HQ to chapters, chapters to HQ. Make it where you facilitate the conversation amongst the chapters, where we can collaborate and be innovative, right? Um, where we can share best practices, where we can say, you know, hey, we're, we're, we're finding that membership's growing with this new peer-to-peer -peer referral system we're using, right? And then investigate that research, but it's because you're listening. And then a great idea with poor execution. There's probably a much more witty quote around what I'm about to say. But a great idea with poor execution doesn't mean anything. There's, we're from Detroit. There's this big company here called Quicken Loans. If you've gotten a mortgage recently, you might have heard of them. And Quicken Loans has these core values. And um, their core values is what guides their company, right? And it says, ideas are great. Execution is worshipped. And really, ideas are a dime a dozen. Execution is worshipped. So make sure that you don't mistake uh, the result, right? Uh, um, don't, don't mistake it, how important approach is versus intent. Your intent might be the best. You might have listened, you might have researched, you might have connect, but, but you didn't execute right, so it fell flat, right? And then you stopped doing it, or, or the HQ or association stops doing it. So test. Do, take a couple of chapters at a time. I know you all can name chapter leaders that you have a better relationship with than others. I know you can name chapter leaders that are early adopters, right? From somebody that's come to our, our webinar in the past, how, how can you tell if they're an early adopter? 
So let's say you identified a problem. How do you know if someone's an early adopter? Can, does anyone remember? Right? So you know they're an early adopter by one, do they have the problem? Yes. Two, do they know they have the problem? That's a, there's a distinction there. The answer is yes. And number three, are they trying to solve the problem? Is that answer yes? So let's say the problem is how do we get our, our members to refer other members, that peer-to-peer -peer referral system. Go find chapters. Do they have the problem? Every chapter has that problem, right? Every chapter has the problem of needing to grow membership, right? Do they know they have the problem? Do they know that peer-to-peer -peer membership could be game-changing for them? Well, yeah, Kyle, these three chapters do. Okay, which ones are trying to solve it? Those are your early adopters. Start testing with them on these ideas because they're going to be willing to struggle through it, right, to prove out the, the project. Then you can roll it out to the, the Debbie Downers out there. Uh, gosh, that was a terrible analogy because we got Deborah in here, and Deborah is not a downer. Deborah is the opposite of a downer. But the, the, the people, the chapter leaders that are always being your troublemakers, right, you know who I'm talking about. You want to get to them last, okay? Um, uh, you want their feedback up front, but you want to get to them last. Woo! All right. Today was high energy. I hope you guys are ready for this on a Friday. Okay, so here's where I need everyone back to their computer, pull out your notebooks. I want to do something real quick, all right? Uh, I want us all to put something in here because as a community, the more we share and work together, the stronger we get. Today, in my opinion, you all got stronger because of Deborah, all right, and what AIGA did. So hashtag leverage chapters. So write that down again. I want you to underline it. All right, and so what I want us all to do real quick, type it into the chat first, and then you can write it down for yourselves. Type into the chat of the question box, what are three to five ideas that you have in your mind? Now, this might have came from other people, but you have in your mind to leverage your current chapter system. And I keep saying chapters, folks, but you know what I mean. Components, they might be state affiliates, they might be regions, sections, branches, whatever you call them. I'm calling them chapters. How do you better leverage your chapter system? Okay? Now, Kyle, you could say, well, it's broad. What do you mean by that? It's, it's up to your association. How do you guys make decisions? Is it based off your strategic objectives? How do you come up with ways to improve things for your members? Okay? And then I want you to think around your HQ. So think about meetings you've been in recently. Think about things that your ED or CEO has said. Maybe they said, gosh, we need better data. Okay? Or, you know what, we're bleeding members right now via retention. Or our industry is changing. The membership needs to get younger. What is your problem? And then I want you to write and put into the chat box three to five ways that you can leverage chapters to improve that. Okay? So let me give you some examples. So if you're saying the problem is, and I hear this one a lot, that we need to reach a younger demographic. That doesn't necessarily need, mean it's got to be millennials. It just might be, I met an association that they're younger meant our average age is like 65. We got to get into the 40s. So how do you leverage chapters off that? So let, let, let's brainstorm together real quick, okay? So one way is um, they found out that a, um, one of their chapters in Florida, and this is a real example. I won't name their names. I didn't ask their permission. One of their chapters in Florida um, the, they got a new president at the chapter, and the president did something really simple. They created um, a peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer membership card, physical card, that helped um, members connect with other ones to help them join. So that helped them grow membership, okay? So how could you leverage chapters? How do you take that program and roll it out to all your other chapters, guys? Um, here's another one. We, we were at our, one of our roundtables recently. And one of the associations said, um, how can I leverage uh, uh, chapters? Well, we're doing a reverse mentoring program. You know, and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I've always heard of mentorship programs. Typically, you know, in my mind, it's an older generation mentoring an up-and-coming generation early in their careers. But this was reverse mentoring. This was the younger generation also sitting there saying, I'm going to teach you how to use social media because it's so important in our industry now. Social media has become huge for advertising. And if you're not on it because you're in your 60s and you didn't grow up with it, they did a reverse mentorship program. And what that did was create a much stronger retention rate at the uh, younger generation level, right? They had, a, they had a purpose, okay? So, again, there's a problem and solution. Both came from chapters, by the way. But 
then they leveraged the chapter uh, um, uh, system, the chapter structure. They found a way to roll that out, test it first, and roll it out to all their chapters to improve that across the entire membership base. And that is absolutely incredible. Okay, so go ahead and type those into the questions. I'm not going to read anything if you don't want me to, um, but uh, go ahead and share those with us. And moreover, for you, do you are are those front and center for you, right? When your CIO walks up and says, "Why the hell do we have chapters?" are are you able to answer? Um, are you fumbling for it? Okay, how do you leverage chapters to um, achieve the success that has been laid out? by your either board or by your CEO or executive director? How do you leverage chapters? That's the question you got to answer day in and day out, okay? Um, and it goes back to those key takeaways on, on how you can get there. But how do you better leverage chapters? Now you might say, Kyle, HQ doesn't care about it, right? Well, we got case studies on when they don't, go prove the value of chapters, leverage them to match what those goals are on the strategic objectives. Right, so if, they, if a strategic objective is to grow membership or maybe raise more money so we could be more effective with advocacy, how do you leverage chapters to do that? If you just state the question, you'll get there, okay? And if, if you, you, you go and Google it and don't find something, go to Collaborate at ASAE and ask the question. Email Bill Highway. Come to our brand new launched uh, website this week, and I'm going to show it to you in a second for the Knowledge Bank. Um, come there. Right? There's, there's ways that you can find out, but you've got to define it first, folks. You've got to define it, okay? Um, John, I know you, so I'm going to read yours off if you're okay with that. I won't read everybody's that are coming in right now. But John said, chapters encouraging members to give presentations to their clients based on the knowledge they've gained through our education, our association's education, which would, in turn, provide them with new clients. John, that's beautiful, dude. That's awesome. That is absolutely incredible. So how do you leverage chapters to do uh, something so important for members that's going to increase growth? So you're adding value, m membership value, you're increasing uh, growth, and you're doing it through the chapters. John, that's, that's incredible, dude. Um, so anyway, folks, you know, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on a soapbox right now, but you guys, as you ask yourself these questions, you'll find a way to get them done. AIGA, super, super incredible what, what they did here, okay? So um, real quick, is everyone still, I still see people typing in there. I want to jump to something real quick. Um, so we just launched our, our new website. I, again, I'm not about to sell you, so don't freak out. Um, what I'm going to do instead is show you the new Knowledge Bank. All right, so brand new launch website, so there's still some kinks that we're working out. But we've, um, since last July, so gosh, a year ago now, folks, um, we started talking about providing free education for people like you associations that have some kind of component structure. Why? Because there was nothing out there for you guys. You could ask questions on Collaborate, which is fantastic. We love ASAE, but there was no, nowhere that was just for you until now. So this is the new um, uh, knowledge bank for people just like you, okay? So you can search the filters below, the material type, whether it's an article or industry content, tools and templates, webinars, white papers, this is not all created by Bill Highway, okay? This is just stuff that we've found that can be really useful to you. I.e., we heard from AIGA at a conference, and we're like, gosh, would you, would you allow us to educate on that? Um, is what we're trying to do with this knowledge bank, okay? There's a bunch of different topics, um, so on and so forth. If you want to learn more about Bill Highway, feel free, but it absolutely is not a requirement. And you can see all the different content that we have in here that are tagged. Okay, so you'll see uh, by next week after we, um, you know, clean up this uh, recording for, for today's webinar, you'll see that it'll also appear up on here, okay? And then you can sign up um, for um, alerts, so when we, we launch something new or we publish something new, you can also be um, alerted of that too, okay? So just a ton of really great content here. Um, again, it's like, it's like I say, when you ask the question, how do I grow membership? Well, if you have chapters, it's completely different than if you don't. If you don't have chapters, the HQ has all the control. You can do whatever you want. But if, you're, if you have a chapter-based system, it's not only that there's less control, it's, it's the other. You gotta flip that. It's, it's a huge opportunity for you to leverage your chapters to do so much more, right? AIGA has 600 chapter leaders on Slack, right? Engaging with their members. 
You couldn't do that to that scale at HQ by yourself without spending a ton of money, right? That's what we're talking about leveraging chapters, okay? So check out the new, we'll, we'll drop the link into the chat for you. Check out the new Knowledge Bank. Um, this is for you. It's all free, guys. You'll never be sold. Um, if you've attended webinars, you've seen some of them on here, right, um, that, that we've already done in the past, okay? So uh, please give us your feedback. If you find bugs, please email us and let us know because um, we're still uh, tweaking that and cleaning it up, okay? And if you got feedback like you don't like it or whatever, be candid. We want to know because we're building this for you. So if you actually don't like it, we need, we need to know that, okay? Um, all right. So uh, we already talked about, um, we already did our exercise here real quick. So what I want to wrap up with real, uh, uh, to end here is if you haven't been to one of our roundtables, here are the ones in July. Uh, you might be saying, Kyle, what are, what's a roundtable? Um, we buy lunch for you in four different cities every single month where people like you just get together. We cap the number of people at 10 to make sure it's intimate and you guys can have a really good conversation. Let me put it this way. We, we have it on the calendar for an hour. The average is like a little over an hour and a half. People typically stay for like two hours um, because you guys are just learning from each other and networking and you know, we've had so many instances where like, oh, we gotta do lunch tomorrow. I have to learn how you did the mentorship program because we're about to launch it. So this is all about you guys. So next week, we are in Chicago, July 12th. Uh, the following week, we are in D.C. on the 18th, Alexandria on the 19th, and Reston on the 20th. So Sarah, uh, my marketing team, just typed into the chat the links to Eventbrite for you to find the different cities. Okay, So find the different city that you like or you're near or is convenient and come join us. We feed you at the very least, so it's a free lunch. Um, it's Panera, um, so it's pretty delicious and you guys get to meet and, and connect with other people, okay? Um, also, you're going to be seeing some more information coming soon. The first ever CRP conference is going to be coming up, um, and we're going to be uh, hosting that in October in D.C., um, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, again, providing it for you guys, it's all about you, and just let us, uh, let us know your feedback once we start sending it out, okay? Um, awesome. All right, well... I appreciate uh, today. Uh, thanks for showing up. I'm around for another five to ten minutes if you guys got more questions. Deborah, thank you so much, okay? Um, Samantha, any ideas on tentative dates for the conference? My marketing team is listening. Sarah, can you either Slack me, because I'm, I'm looking at Slack, or shoot it in? Friday, October 13th. Let me, did you hear that, Samantha? Friday, October 13th is going to be the date in the Metro DC area, we're still working on the actual location, okay? Uh, Jill asked where in DC. Um, we don't have the venue locked in yet, Jill. Um, it's been a real challenge to do that, so once we do, we will let you know. It's gonna be in the Metro DC area, though. We're, we're positioning it um, so it's convenient at least um, on the different Metro lines, too, okay? So even if it's not near you, hopefully it's easy to get to. Um, Samantha, same day as our chapter leader conference. Darn, ah, oh, dang it. I'm sorry to hear that, Samantha. Well, this, this will be the first of hopefully many to come. So um, we will find a way to, to get you some of that value still, Samantha. Thanks for letting us know that, though. All right, any other questions um, that I can ask? Let me go back through and make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. Oh, how, Barbara asked, how quickly did AIGA members begin using Slack once HQ started? started offering a platform? So that's a great question, Barbara. One thing I want to bring up on that, I don't know the exact answer, but I want to point something out that I noticed today. So I, I hope you all saw. Um, so number one, why Slack? Because that's what members are using, okay? It's really important. Um, they didn't try to force them into something that they, they weren't used to. Second thing was, um, uh, so the first thing is the Slack was what they're already using. Second thing is, before the webinar today, I could sign up myself, okay? So if you, you know, um, are able to just get in there, I didn't have to wait for approval. I didn't have to wait um, for the system to tell me. I didn't have to wait for anyone to do anything. I just signed up, an email got sent to me. Uh, it sent me over to Slack, and I was, boom, 30 seconds later, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in, right? So I think that's, I mean, that's really, really important on the onboarding if you want to get a high uh, conversion of members signing up. I think that's super important to, to note. 
Um, but I don't know the exact answer, and I don't know if Deborah's dropped off yet. So if, if she has, um, Barbara, what we'll do is my marketing team will, will go to work to find the answer for you. Okay. okay. And we'll send it to you after the, uh, the webinar here, as long as we can get it. Um, let's see. Oh, and by the way, I think my marketing team just said, oh, we do know. So uh, Samantha or whoever was just asking where it's at, um, Jill was asking where in D.C. It's at the Hyatt-centric Arlington, um, obviously Arlington, Virginia, okay, 1325 Volson Boulevard. So right there in Arlington by the airport, Hyatt-centric Arlington is where we're going to be doing the one-day conference. Awesome. All right, Deborah said she, didn't, she doesn't know how long um, to that answer. So Barbara, we don't know how long, but um, I would think it's safe to say when you look at them, uh, the members already using it in different uh, Slack channels, it's a, it's a pretty easy jump there. So I think that's pretty cool. All right, folks, any other questions I can help out with today? Did you enjoy today's webinar? Was this something that was useful? Can, can you guys make the bridge from not just informational, but hey, how can we apply this at our association? Um, Jennifer, yes, awesome, good, thanks, Jennifer. Um, Jill just asked, registration opens, question mark. Marketing team, do we know that answer? When does registration open? I know we're gonna limit the amount of people because for being our first year, we've made the conscious decision and we're hosting this with Mariner um, Management. So if you've met or heard of uh, Peter Housel and Peggy Hoffman, two of my absolute favorite people with them. Uh, because they just share a lot of the same um, core core values that we do, and they really want to help like we do. So that's who we're hosting it with. Um, we do have a, a um, an associate. We're creating an association advisory uh, committee. Content. Will you just message in? Um, is um, we're just trying. We're not generating the content. You guys are. Okay. So we want to uh, engage with you guys on a monthly basis, um, you know, coming up with different content ideas, how to deliver the content, um, getting feedback on the, uh, the content structure and how we're going to do the day and everything. So if you're interested in that, please um, chat into me right now and I'll make sure that my marketing team gets you on that list. Uh, in the coming um, month or so, we're going to be messaging out for that. Okay, I think we're, allowed, we're putting 15 associations on that or something like that. Oh, D'Amico, how's it going? I recognize that name for one of our roundtables. Um, uh, cool. So thanks. Yes, Windows registration open. Uh, so registration marketing, do we know that? Uh, registration opens in the next two weeks, okay? So by the end of July, that will open. But block off the 13th of October, all right? Um, so D'Amico wants to be a part of the uh, advisory group. Thank you very much. Jill, hand, hand raised, awesome. Um, great, we will, we'll make sure that we, we get you guys on that list, okay? Um, so block out the 13th, it's gonna be phenomenal. I know you don't know me well yet, maybe. I know John does uh, and a couple other, uh, uh, others of you, but we like to create an experience. So it's, not, it's gonna be just an absolute incredible day for people like you. So people that are, are in charge of chapters, trying to grow membership through chapters, chapter leader, uh, uh, um, you know, CRPs at HQ. And it's also for um, more people at HQ too. So one of the challenges we recognize is you trying to get stuff done is often getting the directive from your ED or CEO or CFO or COO or VP of membership. So what we're doing is we're making it uh, applicable for everybody. So that way you can bring more people inside HQ um, and you guys can see case studies like the Slack one, so you can get more buy-in just outside. Awesome, everybody. I appreciate you all. Have an absolutely awesome weekend. Make it an awesome weekend. I had so much fun today. I hope you guys enjoyed this content and can find one little thing that you, go, you guys can go out and try or change. Uh, at the very least, start framing up the problems uh, um, that, that are going on. So. D'Amico, spoke with my CEO about this yesterday. That's great, D'Amico. Keep telling that story. Hey, D'Amico, let us know how we can help you tell that story too, okay? If you need case studies, if you need more examples, if you need to talk to other association CEOs, um, we will facilitate that for you to help you guys get stuff done, okay? Barbara, thank you for this webinar information. Thank you, Barbara, for coming. Um, everyone, enjoy the rest of your Friday. 
Um, I am uh, over and out. We'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.